Good evening, lacrosse fans, and welcome to Game 3 of the East Coast Junior Lacrosse League Garnet Knight Finals. We have the hometown Halifax Southwest Hurricanes taking on the visiting Sackville Sports Wheel Wolves. The Wolves trying to climb out of a two-game hole as they find themselves down two to nothing in the best of five series. Before we set, uh, set the tone here, we're going to have a, a couple of awards given out as uh, signifying and acknowledging all the hard work of some of our fantastic lacrosse players in the league this year. I don't want to play spoilers, so I'll just announce with them. Sackville certainly looks determined, but Halifax, calm and collected. Should be an interesting game three here from Spryfield Lions Den Arena. I think that's what this place is called. Nice. Getting the heads up approval from Jono. John Boutin, Dartmouth Bandit legend goaltender in attendance tonight watching these two teams do battle. Speaking of goaltending, the usual suspects, Noah Cox and Gage McPhee will start this. Gage has been very, very good, as well as Noah Cox. Looks like the awards will uh, just get underway here. As we see Brendan Smith and my uh, color commentary partner ready to uh, hand out the awards. I missed the joke because I'm wearing headphones. We're going to start with the second team all stars. The second team all stars were Francis Grayson of the Halifax Hurricanes, Ethan Muir of the Sackville Wolves, Luke Wilson of the St. Margaret's Bay Rebels. Thomas Davies of the Dartmouth Bandits, Grant Keefe of the Halifax Hurricanes, and goaltender Noah Cox from Sackville Wolves. Congratulations there to the second team All-Star as we see Muir collecting his hardware. From the St. Margaret's Bay Rebel, Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson not able to be in attendance. Thomas Davies, again, couldn't make the trip over the harbor. From the Halifax Hurricanes, Grant Keith. Grant Keith coming out here. As he is injured, not available for this. And of course, goaltender Noah Cox. An exciting, exciting event for these two players, but they have to refocus quickly as this is a do or die game here. From our, our first team All-Stars, from your home team, Glenn Holmes, the Halifax Hurricanes, as well as Seamus Locke from the Dartmouth Bandits. Great season he has had as he just gets called. Isaac Abbott, another Halifax Hurricane winning an, an All-Star award, but not available for tonight. First team all-star defense, Alex Bouchard from the Sackville Sports Wheel Wolves. Congratulations, Alex. As well as Ben Normando from the St. Margaret's Bay Rebels. And first team all-stars. Last but certainly not least, goaltender Gage McPhee getting the first team all-star. for your individual From awards. Rebel, 
Offensive Player of the Year for the ECJLL was Glenn Holmes from the hometown Halifax Hurricanes. Defensive Player of the Year, Alex Bouchard from the Sackville Wolves. Rookie of the Year, Ethan Muir from the Sackville Wolves. Goaltender of the Year, Gage McPhee from the Halifax Hurricanes. Indigenous Player of the Year, Joseph Asseltine from the Mi'kmaq Warriors, as well as Dakota Morrissey from the Bandits. Our league top scorer was in fact Glenn Holmes. And last but not least, the coaching staff of the year goes to the Sackville Sportsbill Wolves. Congratulations to everybody collecting hardware tonight. Dakota is slowly making his way. He was caught up in a little bit of foot traffic coming in. Great to see these two indigenous lacrosse players being recognized. Of course, Brendan Smithson is the CEO of the North American Indigenous Games happening in Halifax in 2023. I have to imagine that this award is holds a special place in his heart for sure. As Coach Kyle Peace comes, collects the hardware for the Sackville Sports Wheel, Sports Wheel Wolves. And Jay gets there. Mitch and Ben joining them as they've put in extraordinary effort here with this young Sackville squad. And Gage McPhee collecting the Big Bad Goalie of the Year award. Well deserved, Gage. Alex Bouchard now getting his trophy for Defenseman of the Year. Or Defender of the Year, I suppose. And with that, we are just an honor song and O Canada away from starting us off here in game three. Sackville looks ready as well as the Hurricanes looking to close out this series. Know the job won't be easy, but certainly uh, exuding confidence in that warm up all night in that rink. Couple legends walking in, big Kevin Mills and big Gordy Puttifant walking by. Hey Gordy, what's up? He can't see that far. He didn't see who it was. The ECJLL would like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Acknowledging that we are in Mi'kmaq, the traditional ancestral territory of the Mi'kmaq people, is a way of showing respect for and honoring our shared history and shared treaty relationship. A relationship based on peace and friendship. It is very important that we continue to recognize our shared history.
And just like that, it's game three. Halifax Hurricanes looking to build off the big home win from last night. Feels like uh, uh, a little while ago, but it was just last night, 24 hours ago. We'll see who uh, will win this battle of attrition in game three because I'm sure these young lacrosse players are certainly feeling it. I was just uh, you know, out there on the floor handing out some awards. Uh, it's about 20 degrees hotter on that floor right now. Oh, man. And I'd say the crowd has tripled from last night, which is just going to make this place on fire. This is going to be a hot one tonight. For sure, for sure. Uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, last game, I think it was a lot of Hurricanes and Wolves fans. I'm seeing a lot of people from the Bandits. I'm seeing a lot of people, you know, from, from the Warriors. Uh, you know, it seems like a lot of people want to see this game. As we get Doolong and Cow and the usual suspects set to do battle in the draw spot here. And that loose ball is won by Cooper Puma. Puma has Grayson all over his back. And Grayson's about to take the first penalty of the game. This one early. The start the Wolves will need if they want to force a game for here, Doolong. Now six attackers, gets it to Muir, Rookie of the Year. Gets a pick from West, over the top shot. Sidearm misses. That's what the Wolves were looking for, getting on the power play early, getting that opportunity to see if they could take the lead. Uh, you know, something they didn't do last night but did in game one, so they're gonna need to get on the board early in this one. In both game one and game two, the Hurricanes started off on fire. They did. And in game one, Cox was able to weather the storm. Uh, you know, last night he was able to weather storm a bit, but uh, you know, the, the balls did start to trickle, so it would be uh, great here if the, the Wolves could get them some uh, some runs here to build off of. Doolong, now over to Muir again. Muir sneaks out, trying to find that far post. Gage McPhee able to get that left elbow out, recovered by the Wolves. Good movement here from the left side. Strong left power play here. Normando goes over to the righty Wheatley, Wheatley. That one sent just wide. Norman Doe, oh my, able. I, save. I thought he saved that. But I, that. I didn't think it went down either. I thought he reached back and pulled it over. I thought, I agree actually. I thought that uh, didn't hit and should have been a uh, good save there. Cowan, make it alone, turned aside from the hip of Noah Cox. That's a big save here. Yeah, they need the stop from Noah tonight, as you said. Wasn't 100% like he was in game one, but off to a good start already. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, uh, Coach Jay Titchmarsh told us before the game, you know, he, he was thinking about a goaltending change, but at the intermission, Noah Cox told him that's his crease. If a kid is willing to still battle in there, you know, I understand why Coach Jay left him in. That's what you want from a fifth-year player, right? The, the man in that, that his, his net, he's not giving it up. Exactly that. West down to Muir. Muir walking back in, able to get a shot on net, turned aside again from the left side of Gage McPhee. Good movement here up to Devine. Devine will look for help off the bench and finds it in big G. Holmes, offensive player of the year for the ECJLL. Finding a way to get that shot. Just misses on uh, the backhand shovel. That's gonna get picked up by Puma. Oh, Puma can't handle that one. Tom able to knock it over to Normando. Normando will wait for the rest of his power play despite only having, yeah, left, yeah, I'm just gonna say that, just about five seconds left now as they take a shot late. Could come back to haunt as Francis Grayson leaves the bench. You're never always uh, able to get that pass. Good job by Normando. Allison now with the ball on the left side for the Hurricanes, waiting for his last righty to come out, finds him, as that's gonna be a little too hot for him. Oh, I thought Tyler Puma was gonna take it and go, but. Hooked up the floor before it was in the exactly. stick Exactly, thinking about what he's gonna do before he catches that ball. Wheatley gets it safely over to half, 25 to work here for the Wolves. A good first power play by the Wolves, yep. got the ball low, working on the inside. Ooh, Just nice couldn't save quite there one. by Gage. And that's exactly it. They forced Gage to make two good saves on that power play. That's what you want. Good job there by Forsythe. 
to strip the ball from the very talented Cowan. Good pressure by the Wolves. They haven't done this in the first two games. They've allowed the free pass. Forsyth forced two huge errors last game that they weren't able oh, to. Oh, just took another one. There. Oh. Unfortunate, a little high. And just like that, the Hurricanes will get their opportunity. Once this is blown down and Sackle gets possession, there you go. They're calling the high sticks tight tonight. Anything mm -hmm. a little bit on the helmet, they're calling it. Um, tough one there, some good, good turnover early and then uh, battling, but just a little too aggressive on that one. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you hate those penalties, but the Wolves got to show some fight. So as, as the coaches of the, of the Wolves there, you got to keep that pressure on, right? And you got to know if you're playing on the edge, once in a while you're going to take one. So. And that's the, it, we'll see how Forsyth can adjust because it's okay to take a penalty. It's not okay to take that same penalty two, three, four times. Exactly. So if he can adjust to what these officials are calling. Oh, a great stick there from O'Connell. Able to get that in the lane, negating the attempt on Cage. Allison over to Holmes. Holmes bobbles that pass. No, he doesn't. Thought he did. Skip pass over to Grayson. Grayson turned aside by the stick of Noah Cox. And Puma off to the races with two Hurricanes no in glove. tow. Loses his left glove. And that is recovered by Allison, who gets it quickly up to Grayson. Grayson met by the big two-way defender, or two-way player, Jack Dulong. Able to get, oh as the one-handed attempt was called by the official. I don't know, Mitch, I thought that was a solid defensive play. I think it was a little tight on that one, but. I, I agree, I, uh, I, I was one-handed. It wasn't malicious. It was almost like a find in your player kind of slash. It, kind of interesting to me too, because I, I felt they've let that go in this series. And then, and then tonight called it, but mm -hmm. I mean, obviously they make the calls, you got to play within it, but. Because like you said, we, the most things that we've seen is that high sticking penalty being called, you know, which I'm okay with, you, you know. Get you a, protect the player's head. Exactly, I mean, no you get somebody that. that gets a stick in the neck and the head, absolutely call that all day. That slash might have been able to let go. As this ball goes all the way back over, Wolves will regain possession here. 46 seconds on the first or penalty, a minute 36 on the second. And it looks like Whitford below the net, trying to kill some time here, able to keep that free hand nice and rigid, not getting called for a free hand. I don't know why they keep calling it as that goes off the official's head. Good pressure here from Wheatley all over McDougal. So was that the Wolves upset with the calls and hitting the official in the head off the wall? <laughs> if, they could, if they had that uh, <laughs> capability, I'm sure they would. Barkhouse, good pressure here on Grayson. Gets it up to Holmes. Holmes steps into one. That just misses the corner. And that will get picked up by Barkhouse as he runs it out of the crease. Gets it safely into the hurricane zone. One off, penalty the expired. One yes, absolutely. 40 in the second. An interesting start where you know, teams have had to kill early. You know, we, we haven't seen that in the first two games. Good save there on the reset shot from Forsythe. That's what you want in a reset shot. Late in a shot clock, you want it to hit somewhere as ugly on a goalie and go in the corner. You want that big rebound. That's the yeah, whole exactly. goal, right? Get the you big gotta, rebound out there. You have to avoid their stick. That was a big shot there that hit the post. A couple of the Wolves fans thought it went in. <laughs> Gage did told again. And that's exactly it. Like, you, Gage is big in there, and, and, you know, when you're good and getting the post luck, that's a... Uh, doesn't hurt, does it? That does not hurt at all. We're back to even strength here. Beautiful. 8.20 here left in the first. Normando takes it to the heart of the floor. Turned aside by McPhee. That's going to go out off of McPhee. So Mitch, almost the opposite of last night where every power play was a goal. They're 0 for 3 on tonight already that's in the early That's a great point. Yeah, you, uh, the power boy, PowerPoint... Uh, excuse me, power play went for at least six last night. Wheatley over to Dulong, 20 seconds to work for Dulong. Oh, Dulong able to outstretch his feet and find that far post. We're gonna get a second look here. As good movement as uh, gets it over to Wheatley. 
And then Normando. Sorry, Normando to Wheatley. Wheatley down to Dulong. Dulong able to inside move on Cutter Devine. Just finds that far post on goalie of the year, Gage McPhee. We got a one nothing ball game. Nice move by Dulong there. No, no help on the inside and took advantage of it, mm -hmm. making sure that he buried it for sure. O'Connell will do battle in the draw dot with Cowan. So I also going to say, Mitch, this is the first time I think the Wolves are out shooting the Hurricane. Yes. Yep. I mean, it's been a, the first couple games, there's been a lot on Noah. And Gage has had to play a big one in the in his first uh, you know, half yep. of the first quarter. So. He's had to make four or five saves. You're absolutely right. And that's indicative of how these Wolves are playing. We got another one, another one oh, coming I was here on say, a high step. I, I, I agree with that one. Muir gets the pass. Oh, able to split the defender and find the five hole against McPhee. Sackville certainly excited, but has to maintain their heads here as there is a lot of lacrosse left to be played. Cannot get complacent here as they try to force a game four. Great job by Muir. Kind of that outside or uh, inside roll on Grayson, able to get his hands free. Interesting, one of the, the pregame thoughts that I had, Mitch, was that the Wolves' younger players need to play a bigger role on the offensive side. They haven't had that breakout, and you've got uh, Dulong and Murr, Muir having both goals, Rookie of the Year there on the last one. Mm -hmm. uh, might need that confidence to start going. And I have to say that Jack Dulong had to be in that Rookie of the Year conversation oh, uh, as well because they were both fantastic. Gets it to Dulong, Dulong gets it again. <laughs> As that one even excited me. <laughs> Didn't Mitch, know what Mitch to jumped say. up on that one. I did. I'm an impartial party of the media, but I like lacrosse goals. Cooper Puma over to Dulong. Dulong with the one handed catch and makes no mistake. Good work there from Cooper Puma. So, Mitch, Jack also Dulong. to note, Jack Dulong was not in the Rookie of the Year conversation because he played last year up. So he wouldn't oh, have been available for the rookie 15. of the year. Yes, he was. So that makes sense. Anyways, well, he you know, probably would have been yeah. up there in the conversation as well. But uh, and you know some... that just goes to show how good he was as a 15-year-old. Oh. You know him, Seamus Locke, another guy that played young. Yep. Alex Pace of Northern Torch in the Philadelphia Wings, another guy that entered the ECJLL a year before they were supposed to. So certainly in good company is Duo. Bayard now with Cowan all over his back. Tries to force one down to Dulong on the wrong side of the floor. Dulong will recover the loose ball. 14 here to work. Dulong to Wheatley. 10 on the shot. Tries to go back to Bouchard. That's going to end up on the ground. But recovered by Whitford. Whitford turns and shoots. That doesn't go through. And good work there by the Hurricanes to negate any opportunities the Wolves had. Mitch, this is the biggest lead the Wolves have had all series at three because. Two was the highest they had at four, two in game one, and they only had a one goal in the last one. So Great point. The Hurricanes have always responded, so it'll be interesting to see what happens here. And it, it's funny you say that. The Hurricanes absolutely have always responded. And that's the, the thing, like, uh, in the Bandit series with the Wolves, the Wolves always responded. And unfortunately, they, in game one and two, they just, they would try to respond, but McPhee would turn the door, or they'd miss the net, you know. And uh, it's just to be our in for a lot of good lacrosse ahead. Good save there from Noah Cox, making it look easy, leaving the rebound there for Wheatley. As Ty Wheatley gets it up to Forsyth. 20 seconds left here to work on the shot clock. Goes down low to West, does near, or uh, Forsyth. West comes around looking for a shot, takes it. Big left leg save from. McPhee picked up by Normando. Good pressure there from the Halifax defense. Nice little pick from Broussard. Opens a little lane for Normando. Gets it to Forsyth. Forsyth turned aside. Big Beautiful save six save. There. Three nothing. You need that save right there. That was huge. But a loose ball recovered by the Wolves. Something they were not able to do in game one, game two. Uh, as consistently as they wanted to. A falling Broussard just misses. You know, it's interesting you say that, Mitch. I was just about to say that in game one and two, there was no rebounds off Gage. It either hit him or the, the Hurricanes got it, and Noah allowed quite a few rebounds, which gave the Hur Hurricanes second opportunity. But not tonight. It's been the opposite. Yeah. And that rebound spits right out to Campbell. 
Recovered by Tyler Puma. He'll run with two Hurricanes on him. Bump there, able to ret retain possession. Meets a third Hurricane. Finally gets it over to Lacroix. Lacroix up to Baird. Baird can't handle the pass. That's going to be a back over here. As Devine touches it. And just for those ones, anybody watching out there, on the back over, if the offense, the defensive team coming up has a chance to pick it up, the officials will let him play until it's sure that it's not going to be picked up and then they'll blow it down. So possible that the Hurricane could have picked it up there and gone in and so give him the opportunity to do so. Good job by Kennedy to get it over to the lefty Allison. Back up to Holmes. Holmes steps into one. That through traffic doesn't make it to the cage, but picked up by Bouchard. Good job by your defensive player of the year, Alex Bouchard, as he flips to Ty Wheatley. Met by McDougal. Wheatley again trying to flip it down to West. That goes wide and recovered by Cowan. Cowan. We talked about this in game two. What's with the flip passes? I, I know. I don't love the flip passes. I do love Cowan, however, because that kid works hard and he is built like a. Oh my! As G. Holmes able to make it count for the Hurricanes. We'll get a second look on that one. As the aforementioned Cowan will get it over to Holmes. Holmes beats West. Gets to the inside, just taking a big hard shot over Tom and Kelsey. And able to beat Noah Cox. 3-1 here for the Sackville Sportsfield Wolves. When you need a big goal, who do you go to? Offensive player of the year, no exactly question about that Exactly that. One. I was able to sit down for about 10 minutes before the game with him, and he is absolutely, oh, ho, 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 ho. sweetly able to find the bottom of that left ankle. We're going to get a second look here right off of the draw. Is that Cooper Puma, usual suspect? Gets the ball up to Wheatley, and we'll see Wheatley just go around the foot, or the ankle, excuse me, of Gage McPhee. Great job there. But like I said earlier, talking with uh, G. Holmes, he is ready. He, he knows this game isn't going to be easy, but he is certainly ready for action, ready for 60 minutes of lacrosse here. Hardest game to win is when you're taking away the cup. Exactly. Good job there by Normando, able to get the loose ball off the draw. Normando looking for help. Thought he was going to go up top to Wheatley. Finally does. 15 to work. Wheatley goes back to Normando. That's just out of his reach. Recovered by Dulong. 10 here to work. An overload here for the Wolves. Oh my, a Dulong with a shot through traffic. And that is number four's third goal of the game. Natural hat jack with the first. Jack wow, the, the Wolves are coming out on fire. Woo. That was a great shot. Up here, Dulon shooting through around a screen. Able to beat goaltender McPhee. Good job there from the uh, young Wolf. Still three minutes to go in this, this quarter here. The, uh, I think the Hurricanes would like to go to the room right now, but. Allison, good job to recover the loose ball off the faceoff. Fakes the flip to Glazebrook. Pass intended for Glazebrook goes down to Grayson. Grayson comes over the top. Great stick there by Stevenson. Able to disrupt that pass and gets a back over. And he'll have O'Connell. O'Connell trying to make them work early. Whitford will slow this down for the offense to get out as they do. Gets it to Lacroix. Still missing a righty. Able to get the ball to Whitford. Whitford met by a big hit from Allison. That knocks the ball all the way back to McPhee. And the Hurricanes transition here. Grayson has foresight all over him. Oh, that's, yeah, I was going to say that probably is behind the back, or from behind. Second one that's now. gonna be a hold, not how. First one you didn't want to have, you don't want to have the second one. Yeah, exactly. Two different calls for sure. Yeah, and two proper calls. Like yeah, I, exactly, the right calls. Yeah, they're the right calls. It is very easy to get frustrated when you know you're going down one, but you cannot take a second in that frustration. This is this is a challenging one. You know, you, you go up five-one, and then you take two penalties, which 
the Hurricanes have been dynamite on the power play. So this is where your defense has got to calm down a little bit. Right? I, know can, I know you're excited, but if you can get out of this two minutes with just allowing one, I can. I would count that as a W. I, I would agree with you. Hurricanes moving it around the perimeter. A skip pass over to Grayson works. He goes back to Allison. Allison and Grayson play catch. Skip and Allison on this one. Holmes with the outside shot. That's going to be a back over here. Oh, and that's negated by the flying stick of Allison. Back to Grayson here. Over to Holmes. Holmes steps into that. That turned aside by Cox as Glazebrook uh, reaches in for that. Huge save by Allison there. Diving over the line so that he can make sure his feet don't touch. He throws it back over. And you know, this one properly caught by the officials. Puma runs into trouble here as he's met by two Hurricanes, but able to get the ball over to Bouchard. Great effort there as Bouchard goes to Normando. And a beautiful save there from McPhee. And a great pass from Gage up to Blazebrook. That was a big stop there. That was a huge stop. Five on three, he's got to make that save and he did it perfectly. And a beautiful pass to get that going early. Nice shot from Allison. Hurricanes recover the loose ball. Good movement here. Oh my, as Claysbrook pays the price. No, ah, I disagree very much so. Oh no, I agree with that call because he's got him for the hold. I really thought... Uh, I don't know what the call is because it was early. So. I, it's going to be a hold on the stick. Uh, whoever the defender was, uh, I thought they were calling him for the cross check, but it would it would have been blown down by now. I believe they caught the hold of the stick on the cross check, or the hold, I guess. Yeah, that's what Still I was. Still holding saying. stick. Yeah. Yep. It's cool. So I think when uh, when he was coming down, he co he was kind of trying to drag his defender down with him. And that's what they got. Good call there from the... Uh, Blazebrook is just shaking his head on the bench because he faked out Noah completely. Went fireside to Noah bit. Oh, totally open on the inside and just left the pad hanging there that he got a piece of it. 32.04 seconds here in the first quarter. Got a four on, four on three situation? I don't see this too often. No, you do not. As... The Wolves will be even in just 10 seconds. West thought about taking it here. 18 seconds left in the first quarter. 15 on the shot clock. West has numerous hurricanes. 10 seconds here left to work. Gotta go. Normando with the big outside shot goes wide. That's gonna hit the roof. Three okay. seconds Norm left. Normando didn't know how much time he had there. He no, he didn't. To not. walk in and take a better shot than that. <laughs> and that is it for an exciting first quarter as the visiting Sackville Sports Wheel Wolves are up five to one. What great action here. The, great to see the Wolves respond after you know, two, like a tough game last night and then coming come on the road again and being able to respond to that one. So it's a, it's a big one there for... Uh, uh, for Coach Jay. It was funny, I was talking to him before the game and he had said, you know, I'd, I'd really rather not to use the awards in game three <laughs> because, you know, I have that pep talk before the game. So I guess that little break there didn't, it didn't hurt him at all. His team no. kept still rolling. The boys are ready for play, or to play. Uh, you know, I often say like, uh, you know, I always ask my players questions. And one of the questions I ask is, what's the most dangerous animal? You know, the shark? Ah, close. It's a wounded one, because a wounded animal will do anything to survive. And right now, the Wolves have to play like a wounded animal. They're down game, two games. They have to come out here and force game four and just take it one game at a time. And that's what I think their mindset is, obviously, off that first quarter. I would agree. One of the big keys in this quarter was, so Cowan has dominated the faceoff, and they had two goals off faceoff wins directly down. I don't know who's, I think Puma's gone back into the draw. Or he's obviously changed it up, and and there's been a you know they're not they're getting some wins and being able to come out with it. And that's the that's the issue is when when Cowan Cowan is so good at winning those clean when he doesn't Cooper Puma is waiting there like a hawk. You know what I mean? Yeah, and exactly. he's been so good all playoffs long, but Cowan has been so good through game two. Uh, it looks like they've made some adjustments in the faceoff circle, and and at least 
at least not allowing him. If you're getting beat by a face-off guy, especially even in field, like if you can't seem to figure out the face-off guy, you have to limit how cleanly he can win. You know what I mean? And I think that's what Sackle's trying to do. Well, and it's interesting because watching Cowan in the draws in game one and two, he doesn't win a lot of draws cleanly to himself. He always wins it to his guys. Great positioning, stick movement, foot movement. He uses his whole body to direct it where one of his guys are. And it's like the Wolves know where it's going now, and it started to move to those positions to be able to beat that. So we'll see if uh, Coach McNeil starts to adjust that and see if they put Cowan in a different spot to move the ball where they can uh, they can get an opening because I'm sure they're going to want to take advantage of those. Again, the, I'd say the Wolves outshot that quarter, which would probably be the first time that's happened all series. And not only just, like, uh, attempts at cage, attempts on net. Like, exactly. I mean, I don't know how many times they were missing that net early in game one and two. I don't think I. I think maybe one or one, once or twice they might have missed the net, which is typical. I would have said in uh, in game one and two, over fifty percent of their shots yep. missed the net, yep. and I would say they're around seventy-five percent hitting the net. And I've noticed they've taken something off the shots because they needed to hit the net, right? And exactly. They're also getting second chance opportunities because they're hitting the net and it's coming out, and they're being able to pick up the rebounds. The other times they were shooting so hard, it was getting stuck right in the chest of Gage. You would just drop it right there, grab the ball. Now it's going off his shin pads, which is firing it out farther to where the offense is already set up. So, you know, definitely an adjustment there by the Wolves and, and making sure they're getting more second-chance opportunities, which they're going to need um, to be able to keep getting these shots because goalie of the year, Gage McPhee's down there. He's not letting in the easy ones. You're going to no, work for everything no. you got, and those have been solid five goals down on him in the, in the first uh, quarter here. Every goal has been a goal scorer's goal. I, I, I got to agree with you on that one. Like, it, it was like in game, in game two, Noah Cox – you know, was letting it go, but we we couldn't harp on Noah. Exactly. Noah was, you know, making every save he could have, even some he shouldn't have. And that's what much what Gage is having to do, to do here because Gage has made at least 10, 15 saves in that first quarter as well. You know, I'm also interested to see tonight, we've talked about this a little bit in the first two games, is I still believe the, the Hurricanes have shortened their bench in game one and two and didn't quite move everybody through and, and tightened up to minimal numbers. They do look a little tired in that first quarter, and mm -hmm. I just wondered if that might be playing on because it is it is hotter here than it's been in any other game this year, I'm going to tell you. Well, I think you were on the floor when I was talking about it, but this is definitely game three is a war of attrition because yeah. just 24 hours, these kids busted their butt off for 60 minutes, and if only if, you know, you got 20 wolves there that busted their butt, but if only 10 of the Hurricanes were busting their ass for that 60 minutes, they're going to be in rough shape tonight. Exactly. And it's interesting because the Hurricanes have played back-to-back -back against the Rapids. They had a back-to-back -back night where they played down in St. John and then back here. Mm -hmm. So the first time they've done back-to-back -back at, uh, at home, but the, it's be the first time the Wolves have done it. But, for sure. You know, as you said, they're a wounded animal. They, they've got nothing to lose tonight, so exactly. they're throwing everything at them as much as they can. They got all summer to rest. They can't rest tonight. And here we are about to start the second quarter. I'll also say the Wolves bench has been lively tonight. Last night there was no clapping, no cheering, no nothing. I know it's harder when you're down, but you need that you need that momentum on the bench. It's almost more important when you're down, but it's harder to do. It is. Bouchard able to collect the loose ball off the draw. Puma thought about going to Muir off the bench. We'll go to the lefty Bouchard as they change and get the offensive unit out here. Broussard, Whitford, West come off and join. Whitford up to Broussard, he steps in. He won't take, goes down to Muir. Muir with a quick stick and a beautiful goal. The start that they needed in the second quarter and the power play coming to work here for the Wolves. That is a distance quick stick by Muir and they've not used that all series. Like. I've all, I've, we've been mentioning about getting Muir down low and being able to take advantage of that, and that was the first time they've done a skip pass down low for the quick stick. And, and it's funny you say that, is is when Muir is in tight, he's been forced to put it up and over McPhee. Gage McPhee's about 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, he's a hard guy <laughs> to get, get over. You're not getting anything no. over. <laughs> it's different when you're dealing with somebody 5'10", like myself, but I mean... I, and I think Gage was surprised by it because they've not done it all series. Exactly. So all of a sudden he turned around and he was quick sticking it. I was like, whoa, what was that? I wasn't expecting that. And I always used to say, never tell me what, like, never tell me who a player is. Oh, a beautiful save there as I thought G. Holmes was looking for his second one. Noah Cox took that. I thought it had eyes. 
Um, I have no idea what we were talking about. We'll but it on. was important. <laughs> Mitch, everything we say is important. Mostly. You know that? <laughs> we're talking about the quick stick, and you never wanted oh, a goalie to uh, tell you. So, so like, uh, all these players would be like, oh, did you, uh, I, I've had uh, the privilege of playing against the Thompson brothers, a lot of good lacrosse players. And, uh, you know, Cody Jameson, they're like, what, what, you know, what do you think of this player? I couldn't tell you a thing about the player, but I could tell you exactly what his head, the head of his stick looked like, because that's the only thing I'm looking at. Right. And that's what uh, I think McPhee was anticipating what Muir's been doing all season. Exactly. And then, boom, changing it up. Big save. Wow. Beautiful they save They just walked there. in from the corner there, and Cox made a huge save. Great job, Noah. Oh, as the back in is going to get possession to the Hurricanes here. 13-17 left in the second. Holmes comes up and around the pick. He's met by Norman Doe, goes over to the lefty. As Kennedy gets it back to the righty. Ooh, I thought that was a knuckleball. Looks like it went off Wheatley. Will get recovered by the Wolves. Wheatley has Norman Doe. And Norman Doe has a little two-on-one situation. Looks off Forsyth. And that's, save by Gage. Yeah, beautiful save off the left mitt of Gage McPhee. Devine starts this up for the Hurricanes. I, I, good job by Forsyth to put the ball on the ground. And that's going to get recovered by Tom. Tom able to get low, a little two on them. Two on one situation. Gets the ball to Whitford. Whitford up to Bouchard. Bouchard to Broussard. Broussard steps into the one. That through traffic. Able to find a home, but Gage McPhee turns it aside. They're still hitting the net. That's the biggest key difference between game one and two. Shots are getting on net. Exactly that. Holmes met by Bouchard. Good D as he's able to get the ball on the ground. Not sure if you saw just how he was able to get on that back or the bottom hand of Holmes. A beautiful strip there from a defensive player of the year. Tom, met by McDougal, able to maintain possession, but leaves a little bit of his shaft hanging for the slash. Able to keep it in his stick. Good effort there from the defender. Muir steps into one. Little fake there. He tries to pop to O'Connell. That's a little bit of trouble, but Dulong recovers Muir. Another quick stick from a few feet out. Gage, Gage remembered that last exactly, right there it. for that one. Like, you got me once, it isn't going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Fool me once, shame on you. Muir flips to Dulong. 20 here to work west with a little toe drag. He's turned back by the defender, goes to Dulong. Dulong steps into that one, that just wide. As Muir picked it up in the crease. No, I got to give a hands out for the Wolves defense here. I don't think the Hurricanes have got inside all night. And it's not, it's not just their defense, their, their reverse transition is it's, so it's sharp right now. Like it's Another outside shot, which is great, but they are not getting in the middle at all, no. which last night they were all over it. Oh yeah, how many times did Glenn Holmes walk down the middle? You can't let that happen. Good defense here on the weak side. Norman Doe out, out last, or uh, sorry, excuse me, almost gets that loose ball uh, foot race. You see right there, the official giving Norman Doe the chance to pick that up. Mm -hmm. Once he didn't, blows it down, but gives him the chance to maybe get a breakaway. Exactly. Whitford off the half boards, over the pick. Looks like an overload situation. They get the ball to the right side and send picks. Lacroix gets it. Down to Broussard. He'll come around that pick. 15 here to work for the Wolves. Oh, Lacroix with the pass intended for Wheatley goes away. Good pressure by Wheatley to force a, oh, that's gonna be a loose ball push uh, from Lacroix. At least he made him pay for it, right? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna make it count, make it count. The Hurricanes seem a little frustrated on the offensive side. Mm -hmm. They have seen a couple of them complain to the refs and smack their six coming off. They just gotta calm down, lots of time in this one. For sure, lots of time indeed. Holmes can't get over top of Bouchard. Oh, a nice save there from Noah Cox off the quick Blazebrook. Looks like they ran through a crease for that loose ball. 
Stevenson able to get I think that was it. actually pressure there when he didn't have the ball is what he ended up calling. Oh, minute. is that what it was? Yeah. I just, I'm starting to make things up. A big strip from Holmes in no man's land. Oh, and a breakaway oh. save from Noah Cox. Look at that, he's got his Woo. hand up. He's feeling it tonight. Wow, is he ever, and I loved it. The big give and take, leaving that left-hand side. Thought, you know, I was a big fan of that because a goal scorer is looking for all that mesh. And if he sees it, sometimes it's hard to say no. Holmes tried to make a move first, but Noah stood tall until he took the shot. And uh, like that's how uh, we've said that, or I've said that numerous times in these streams. Like one of the hardest things for young goaltenders to do is not bite on a fake. Like it, it's interesting you say that. I thought Noah has moved early in. The, it worked in game one, and but in game two they knew he was moving early and was mm -hmm. taking that fake. But tonight he stayed much taller and, and stronger in the net there. So. Huge save there, which it was interesting. I don't know if you saw it, Mitch, but after he raised his hand to the I crowd that, there, yeah. he, he's feeling it tonight. This, he, he wants game four. He's going back home. No doubt about it. They want to play back in the den, and they're playing like a team that deserves to right now. They are right now. They still got a long way to go. Long way. Forsythe looks off the bench, finds Whitford. Whitford over to Broussard. Broussard has Baird on the crease. Can't get him the ball. Good defensive help there from the Hurricanes. A little, a little late back. on the pass there. They, if he catches that and moves it quickly, he gets it. Uh, but he took a little extra time there, and uh, defense is able to get back out. Got too many men call there. Mitch, Mitch caused a transition possibly here from Muir. Pass a little high, though. Good job from Muir to play that safely off the boards. They'll get it up to Wheatley. 20 here to work for the Wolves. That pass to Bouchard is handled well. Bouchard cuts the middle. Oh, and he's knocked. Recovered by Whit Wheatley. He's turned aside by McPhee. Devine can't come up with that loose ball. Wheatley does, or almost does, excuse me. Finally, the Canes do. And this has to be close to a 10 second violation. That's gonna get recovered by Wheatley. He goes up to Whitford. Oh, and that shot is blocked by Cutter Devine. as it looks like we've employed 30 extra refs sitting in the crowd tonight. <laughs> making a Everyone's great call got an opinion, on everybody's one. got an opinion. <laughs> I joke, I joke. They were right on that one, off green indeed. Broussard can't handle that pass, recovered by Lacroix. As he flips to West, that somehow finds a home. Ball recovered here by McPhee. And the Hurricanes will go the other way. Seven minutes, 15 seconds left in the first half here of game three. Hurricanes lead the series two games to nothing. But Sackville, all Wolves tonight, 6-1 here. And plenty of time left. Holmes over to the lefty, Grayson. Grayson steps in, that's turned aside by Cox. Good transition pass here from Puma to Puma. As Cooper thought about going to Dulong off the bench, he'll wait and find Baird. Baird trying to force one into the middle to Dulong. That's gonna hit the mesh and Hurricanes possession. Key for the Wolves tonight. The transition defense has been unbelievable. They're back on everything. Mm -hmm. And I really love, like, uh, especially uh, in the second quarter, you'll see almost a floating triangle yeah. uh, in that, like, uh, almost like a neutral zone trap almost. As Cox yeah. makes another beautiful save. When you got a five goal lead, it's a little easier to hang back a bit. Exactly. Forsyth, oh, just misses that breakaway pass. Not able to corral it was Whitford. Hurricanes come up with it. And they're going the other way. Just able to get it over half before the 10 second violation. Blazebrook looking for some help. He'll run it to his proper side, gets it up to Grayson. Grayson over to Lynch. Lynch, a beautiful shot down low. That's turned aside by Cox. And a good loose ball battle. Good effort there from the keeper to come out and help. One thing about that, what uh, Noah Cox just did, is if you're a young goalie going behind your net, you have to keep one foot planted in the crease yep. so you can drag that ball back in. If, you're, if your two feet are out there, you're not, you're not really as helpful as you could be to your players. 
Those little things make a difference, and that's they what really the Wolves do. are doing tonight, the little things. Bouchard up to Whitford. Last man out on this offensive unit is West, but they're gonna take the shot anyway. That hits a leg, ends up in the corner, recovered by West. West needs a reshot, ooh, as that almost off the fingers of Gage McPhee and recovered by Whitford. A beautiful save there. Great stop, but he was a little surprised by it, I think. Yeah, I think Wasn't so. Wasn't expecting it that quick. I'm okay with this. Uh, Looks like McDougal and Whitford were chopping each other a little bit back and forth. They're going to take two of them. I think McDougal said something to him on the way to the box, too. <laughs> <laughs> Goalie's taking a water break. Smart idea because it's 100 degrees out here. Yeah. It's interesting to see here. You see the wolves kind of wandering around. The hurricanes are on, you know, kind of down on their knees. They're they're feeling this. They're laboring a bit. They uh, they need to get something going here. And I I honestly think if we continue to notice it, it's gonna come back to that shortening of the bench yeah. in game one and game two. It's interesting in game two. I don't know if you noticed, but in the fourth, they actually took G out of the game. Uh, Rose had some injuries this season and trying to make sure he was all right, but. I, I get it. Like, if you if you got a commanding lead and, 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 and you want to rest your, your top guy, you know, I said the same thing about Noah Cox, too, like taking Noah out, uh, you know, and giving him an extra little break, you know. Sometimes you got to take care of your... As you said when you were talking to Jay, Noah said, no, you're not. <laughs> exactly <laughs> I'm just going to stand in there with two guys if that's what happens. That's right. And that's going to be a back over here as the Wolves are in the heads of the Hurricanes here. Couple of unforced errors here by the Hurricanes, which has been not like hasn't happened in the series. They've had a couple turnovers, some mental mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, they got to keep it. They keep it up. If you uh, happen to be in Spryfield, make sure you check out the Elegate Lacrosse Shop. If you're not familiar, Elegate is McMoggy for he or she plays. Oh my! And speaking of plays, Glenn Holmes makes a big one. Just an off-ball cut, seeing eye top corner. You said he had one earlier, this one definitely saw the back of the net. As we get a second look, Stevenson gives him a little bit too much room. A two on one here, oh. And you could see Noah Cox moves first on that. Yeah. He's floating to his right post. He was almost like he was gonna give him that give and go again. But yeah, this time. And interesting there is, is I don't know if Stevenson thought there was going to be a turnover and started heading up the floor, but started to go the other way. You, you can't leave Jesus. No. The one guy in this league you could out yeah. leave open, that's the man. But again, also, a lot of the goals, they're not pressuring the ball. It gave them time to make the perfect pass, right? And, and see the whole floor, and then four and four is going to happen. And, you know, G, it's, it's interesting to see G got, got stopped on that earlier when he tried to go to the top corner, but went right back to it and definitely buried that one. Yeah. But you are right, Noah moved first on that one, and that's what they've been trying to do is get him to move, because in game two, he definitely moved early, but he's been holding it. And there's so many things players can do to get a goalie to move early. It's not your, like, it's not always your stick. Sometimes it's your eyes, sometimes it's your shoulders, sometimes it's your hips. Anything to kind of make that goalie jump early. You know, it's funny you say that. One of the one of the players I grew up playing with was uh, Brody Merrill. I don't think he's ever thrown a stick fake in his life. <laughs> it was all head and body, and he could fake a goalie to the ground just by doing that. Maybe People that... would say he's a great faker. I'm like, I don't think he's ever thrown a stick <laughs> fake in his life. <laughs> Didn't he have to play Nets one year? I know Colin Doyle had to play Nets for Brampton in the playoffs, but I thought Brody Merrill had to play Nets. He would. If he I know he would. Do so. I, th I think he did play Nets, and like it could have been a regular season game. But... Brody Merrill, a fantastic lacrosse, perennial Hall of Famer. Grayson gets the ball down to Allison. A little bit of life here on the Canes bench is what they needed. Still four on four lacrosse here for 50, 50 seconds. Interesting, the Wolves must have saw something there calling that timeout, right? Just one goal you wouldn't think it's a big deal, but you gotta make sure you shut it down right away. Exactly, and, and you know, 
You're you're up by four, three minutes left. If you see something that you think might happen again in that last three minutes, that's a good time to nip that in the bud. Exactly. Can't carry it over. You may as well use it. Mm -hmm. Puma goes to West off the bench. West has Forsyth, Brassard, Bouchard out there with them. Forsyth now has a lane. Oh, looking for that far post. That goes wide. It's going to hit the mesh and be a Hurricanes possession. Devine starts this up, goes to Holmes. Four Holmes. seconds on the four on four here, Mitch. Great call here. Oh, Glazebrook cuts hard through the middle. Great save there by Noah Cox, a great shot. And that's gonna get turned over off the mesh. Gonna be Hurricanes ball. Holmes goes under Barkhouse and finds that corner again. Just ducked under there, no support because of the, that going on the inside and buried that top corner again. We said it, we said it last game too. If you're the last man, the low guy, you can't get beat low. Barkhouse has to run him to the boards. You know what I mean? He, he gets that inside track. Barkhouse has to go straight to that, you know, run, like run him to the boards as fast as he can. You know, you add to that, if you watch the video again, Blazebrook comes up, who was the crease guy, which was his slide help. As he moves away from the ball, Glazebrook still stays the dotted line for a drop shot, but now there's no slide coming across the crease, which gives Holmes more time to go all the way across if he can't drive him down, as you said. He tried to, you know, tried to cut him off early instead of just going straight to the inside post mm -hmm. and cutting him off. Good, clean win from Cowan. Those mental mistakes are what, you know, those little things make a difference in this game, and G has three now, so and offensive and player of the year you go to when you need it, right? Exactly, and we said it, we said it in game one is, Oh my, Holmes again finds the far post. And just like that, the Hurricanes are within two. And the Wolves already took their time out for this half. Again, same, exact same play almost. They're yep. trying to push on the back side of them and not drive him down, beating him by his feet. Once you, get, once you get beat on his feet, you gotta hold that stick in the position where he can't shoot it. And they just put their stick down and pushed him, which made him go even farther, beat Noah on the outside. Noah seemed a little surprised that he got around there. I think he was expecting him to come in tighter, took the outside shot, which surprised him. Mm -hmm. Holmes is always changing it up, which it makes a big difference. And you're, uh, that's what you have to do. You can't get stuck doing the same thing. Okay. You, you saw McPhee, Mir gets the quick stick the second time around, he's standing right there, he knows what he did last time, well, it's coming again. Lacroix gets it from O'Connell, he tries to find Dulon down low, that's bobbled. Cowan gets it behind the net for the Hurricanes. Big pass down to the transition player. Mitch, this is a big time for the Wolves. They've slowed a bit on offense, you, like a couple drop passes. They gotta pick the energy back up, it's a mm -hmm. long game. We talked about this. That we did. An overload situation here. Nope. Kennedy will come out to help. Oh, Holmes steps into that one. That's turned aside by the left elbow of Cox. Good save for Noah to get refocused and build off that one. Oh, as uh, Barkhouse tries a desperation icing it almost. Normando almost got that right out of the bench. Right idea, he's gonna get the 10 seconds, so it's where exactly. you know your guy's coming, but we got a call here. I think Normando just didn't expect it at his feet. Looks like Muir. Nope. Nope. This must be on the Hurricanes, they had the ball. Home. That was definitely behind the plane. I, yeah. I didn't see it at all. It was the, the lead official way up here in the end and uh, kind of getting that. Normando starts this up, has Dulon Bouchard on his left side. Muir and Wheatley on the right, goes to the right side. Wheatley back to the lefty. That's picked off by Grayson. Good effort there from the Hurricane. Looks like a timeout called here by the Hurricanes. 46.72 left here in the second half, or first half, excuse me, second quarter. I don't know if you, you saw that there, but Coach McNeil was not happy. 
He said to Maurice, I've been yelling for 10 seconds for a time out here to call it. <laughs> yeah, I've been there, Andrew. Been there. <laughs> I think we've all been there. Yeah. Not always paying attention to that. That's exactly it. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of noise pollution yeah. in this rink, that's for sure. So I didn't I didn't see that high stick either, but I did also didn't see G argue it. So exactly. I feel, yeah, I feel he, like he did something there because he, he didn't make uh, any comments back on it. But no. uh, this this is a this is a dangerous moment for the Wolves. You know, you got a chance to get, you know, change that momentum, which is the positive. But if they kill this off, they're already rolling and they keep that going. This this is a dangerous time. Uh, it certainly is, uh, especially because they're, you know, they only got one goal here in the second quarter. That's tough. Like, I mean, that's, yeah, you, you got to produce every quarter if you want to win a championship. Their offense has slowed. You're just, they, it's almost like they've lost a bit of confidence here. And a power play is a great way to get it back. So I'm sure that's why uh, Coach McNeil called that timeout because he knows how important this is right now, killing us off. That goes off of the Wolves defender, Tom, negating the back over. Grayson picks it up. Ten seconds here to work or to kill. A no-angle shot's going to go out of the burn and back to the Wolves' possession. Puma. Thought about flipping it to Normando, realized they had McDougal there waiting in the wings. Good effort there from the big defender trying to disrupt things early. As Normando Wheatley play catch, looking to break down this defensive unit. Back to Wheatley up top. A big shot turned aside by McKee. And that's all she wrote for the second quarter. Tail of two quarters, Mitch. Wolves dominating the first, and then obviously the Hurricanes coming back in the second and uh, replying to what was uh, what was a disappointing first to them. So, I mean, that's that's how you do it in this game. Game of runs, we've talked about this. And I, I, I got to say, I, I'd probably, I would probably tell my guys to break this down to two games. You got quarter three, you win quarter, hey, Tim. You got quarter three, you win quarter three, you're out of this in game four. You win quarter four, boom, you're back in home barn. You know, and that's all it takes. Take this one game at a time, one period, one quarter at a time, I should say. As you said, how do you eat an elephant? That's exactly it. One bite at a time, baby. You know, we're talking about some of the small things that uh, the teams are doing. One thing I noticed that the Hurricanes, as I said, I always talk about uh, every time we play the Hurricanes and Coach McNeil is, you know, they never stop. Right, it's it's uh, you know 60 minutes. They're running the whole time. Some little intangibles that I see them do that they weren't doing in the first, but it picks it up again. You know, when there's a loose ball, where you know it's dead, they're still running to pick it up to get that extra 30 feet and go with it. You saw right there at the end of the quarter, a shot by Grayson goes out of bounds. It's going to be the Wolves' possession. 19 from uh, the Hurricanes doesn't let it go all the way down the offensive zone. Stops it. Doesn't throw it away. Puts it right down and waits for the Wolves, who then they get a chance to set back up on the defensive end. Just those little intangibles that slows the team down, changes the momentum, makes sure you have control in everything you're doing. That's beautifully put. You're absolutely right on that one, Smitty. Mitch, you're gonna give me a big head if you keep saying that. <laughs> the uh, so, what do the Hurricanes need in the third? Well, you know. It, I, I think they got to continue what they're doing. Um, you know, the, the one that I was going to mention that I think's really turned it around in the second is Glazebrook on the offense. I know he doesn't have one yet, but he started to cut through the middle, break them down a bit, which has caused other opportunities. Forced um, Fox to make a couple big saves. Huge saves. And so he has that high energy, and so I, need, I think they need to keep that. And I really think with the Hurricanes, it's the off-ball movement that is the strength. And they need to continue that, working from one side to the other, making him go east to west. Uh, and, and chipping away at his confidence. So I think that's a big one. What about yourself and the Wolves? Well, I think uh, the Wolves just got to keep doing what they're doing. Like, uh, they fell asleep there in the last half of that second quarter a little bit, let the uh, Hurricanes come back. But, you know, the way they, they uh, played that first quarter, the way they started that second quarter with that early goal, you know, they need that fire, that energy, that flow in. And, you know, we talk about this being a game of runs. And, you know, not every player in this league can go 100% for 60 minutes. So, you know, maybe that was a couple of the big guys on the Wolves taking a little break before they go into the deep water that is the third and the fourth. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I got to say with the Wolves, it's uh, definitely those younger uh, younger players. They stepped up in the first, and they got to keep playing at a higher level, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I found in the first two games, a lot of their young players have been playing the same in the regular season, and there's another gear. Yep. And they hadn't hit that gear until, the, you know, the start of the first quarter of this one, and they got to stay at that gear. It is a game of runs, so, you know, I think they got to stay out of the penalty box as well. And uh, uh, one of my keys to the game definitely was uh, Noah had to be the best player on the floor, yep. and he... He's playing, he's playing extremely well, so uh, they, they've got the goaltending they need. They just need to do the other end. Anything you're seeing from the Hurricane side? Well, I mean, we saw some frustration there, but I think it's very indicative of the type of leader that G. Holmes is, that he's able to, in a championship game, when his team's not responding, he's able to sink four to keep them in this game. So uh, I think they're, the, the, they're going to have to start building up around G, giving him some support. We're getting some support from Glazebrook. We're getting some support from Kennedy and Allison. But uh, they're really going to start to have to produce here. Yeah, I would agree with that for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Todd Bouchard, for the cold treat. A nice orange freezy. <laughs> Everybody's quiet here in the ring because they're announcing the 50-50 winner. Yeah. So every single person is looking at their uh, their chips to see if they're the ones who have it. With the crowd tonight, I bet it's a pretty big prize. I would have to say. Looks like we do have a winner. I know it wasn't me, Mitch. <laughs> I think you put half the pot in with that uh, bunch of tickets you buy. That all goes to the hometown team. you got to support them while you're here, right? That's exactly it. Can't take it with you when you go. Might as well risk it on some 50-50. Exactly. The game gave a lot to me. you got to give back when you get the chance, the opportunity to do that. So, you know, never a problem giving to any of the clubs here that are doing amazing work. And a lot of great volunteers. You know, one of them announcing the 50-50, Jody Wood, who's been with the Hurricanes. Doesn't even have a... a um, a, spout, or a, a child on the team yeah. and still uh, still involved helping them from the logistics side of things. You know, I don't, I don't know if people know how many, um, you know, how much volunteers get into a junior team. It's, <laughs> it's not just a coach and a manager. There's a, there's a whole bunch of others behind it. You're absolutely right. As I enjoy a nice mouthful of my orange freezy, the uh, we have such a short bench when it comes to volunteers in our lacrosse world. So to get somebody that's willing to uh, give back without having any skin in the game, like Jody Wood, that's a you know that's a it's a special thing to have volunteers like that, you know. And in the same breath, Steve Brown with the Sackville Wolves, his kids have been long gone out of lacrosse, and he still gives back to the Wolves as a huge reason why they are the Sackville Wolves. Oh, 100%. It's, what, it's been over 25 years for that guy involved, and probably even more than that. Mm. Uh, you know, he's the face of the Wolves and. I've always asked him, I said, are, are you ever going to hang it up? He's like, not until they got a seat here for me. So it's going to be a while before <laughs> where that happens. I don't think anybody wants to see him go. It's always a smiling face to see him at a game. Mm -hmm. And uh, he does his best to attend. And not just junior games. I mean, if there's a junior game and a U10 going, he's probably going to the U10 I game. I saw right? him at a U10 game on Sunday. Yeah. In Sackville. <laughs> exactly. Whatever the Wolves are playing, he's supporting them. It doesn't matter, male, female, age group. He wants to make sure he's at every game and uh, making sure they're all seeing his face because... You know, he wants to be there for them. He, he remembers being at that age and getting involved with his kid and stuff. So. Well, he, like his volunteerism is in direct correlation why Jay Titchmarsh and Kyle Peace are still here. And those two are directly correlated to why Ben McKay and Mitch Broussard are still there. Like it just goes to show, we talked about it in game two, you build something that people want to be a part of and it's a special thing like this. Oh, exactly. It's... It takes so much to make these things happen, and um, when you see someone work so hard, you just want to step in and do some extra things, um, help out where you can. And I know Jay and Kyle. I don't know if they expected to be here having uh, having kids this year and uh, <laughs> one year old. So, uh, but you know, uh, kudos to them and all the work they've done. But also, as you said, mentoring the next generation mm -hmm. of of coaches. Um, you know, I. I I'm going to say it. I, I see a few years down the road, I see those guys taking over this junior team and uh, Kyle and Jay taking their time to be like Steven and join from the stand. Exactly. It's, a, it's a nice feeling. 100%. And that's what the, like, if, you, if you're a lacrosse coach or, or if you're running a junior program, 
and you don't at least have a long-term succession plan, you're you're not doing it right. You know what I mean? You should want to be able to pass this on to somebody, you know, and, and build, like, you know, and move on, move on. Like, maybe go on to somewhere else. And, and you know, it's, it's nice to see that, you know, people are doing that. We're getting more, you know, more people volunteering in senior and, and stuff like that, which is hard because parents have to be here with their kids. They got to drive them to the rink, you know. <laughs> the, it's hard. You know, sometimes parents, well, I shouldn't say that. Some parents are, are fantastic and make it to every game they can of their 30-year-old man-child son. But, you know, that doesn't always happen. I feel like you have a few names you could repeat there. <laughs> there you go. Kids. No. All the time. <laughs> I do love Gavin Quigley and his mom who comes to every game. She's my favorite. No, it is great to see the parents get involved, though. Mm-hmm. And it, it is harder as you get older through, um, you know, with minor they're, you know, their kids are so involved. They want to be involved because it keeps them in the game. But at this age, there's so many other things to do that parent being involved is not really one of the reasons that you're here. So yeah. uh, making sure that they're here. So, Mitch, I just looked down there, and there's a, obviously a hurricane fan. You caught that, too. Walking, you walking that with too. a broom. <laughs> this is, could be an awkward moment in yeah. 30 minutes if that doesn't go the way he's hoping. So He, uh, might, uh, <laughs> he might be asked to do some janitorial duties here if uh, – Scary thing, though, is he walked right in front of the Sackville area. Who knows exactly who that kid is for later in the game? If it does not, if the score ends the way it is now, they're mm-hmm. going to make sure they remember he had a broom there, right? There so. is uh, some tension between these two <laughs> sides of the stands here. It's always interesting in this rink because I mean Sackville has the two sides, so it's a little bit harder to be close. But there's just a hallway in between the Sackville fans and the Hurricane fans, and when someone yells something, the other side definitely heard exactly sure. what they said. Uh, so there's a little rivalry in the stands as well, which is all part of the game and all part of the fun. But as you said, like I, I didn't notice at the start, I was kind of out there doing the awards a little bit. But the amount of players that are here tonight that play in this league, not part of this game, is quite impressive. And I'd also say alumni in the last uh, five years. Yep. Um, you know, there is no other game in town right now, but that's how good this series has been, even though it's 2 nothing. You know, people are here wanting to see this game, and I've also seen some of the junior A female players here as well. Mm-hmm. You know, Hurricanes champions in that and supporting their team. So, and same on the Wolves side. So it's really great to see, you know, this place is a packed house and um, everybody enjoying it. They, every little hit and everything, there's an ooh, ah, oh, yeah. Like, it, when someone scores, there's there's a sound in this place. Yeah, That's and what not you want just to see. for me either. <laughs> they thought it was for you, but they can only <laughs> hear you at home. I was talking to uh, uh, Coach Tishbar there at the, before the game after you were talking to him, and he said he rewatched the game and he said he was yelling at the two of us from what we were saying and arguing, <laughs> even though we weren't there. <laughs> it happened. Too long. Cowan again in the draw stop, draw dot to start this third. I got distracted by a beautiful golden retriever that walked through the arena. That's going to get picked up by McDougal. So good at the yeah, I mean, like, let's be honest. If you're here in silence, it's because we're finishing our freezies. 30 seconds left on the penalty kill here as Grayson gets double teamed by Stevenson and O'Connell trying to knock that ball loose. Able to stay on his feet is Grayson. Good effort wow. there. Not the whole 30 by not going back over and keeping it deep, so they have to reset that, so... And I'll say, Mitch, for anybody who's here, they know why we have a freezy, because it, yeah. it is hot in here. Yeah. It is an Oklahoma smoke show in here. If you're not familiar, listen to that song. Good tune. <laughs> Zach Bryan, what up? Oh, and the Broussard shot goes wide, recovered by Allison. Allison finds Holmes off the bench. We got a 3 on 0 Holmes makes no mistake. Wow. Great out of, and this, this is one of my biggest issues. You cannot take a shot as a as a penalty shot or as a penalty's expiring. You can't take that shot because this is what happens. You know, I, I'll, I'll say that as uh, you know, out there to little kids. You said that every kid says there's five seconds on the shot clock or the penalty. I got to take a shot. If there's no reset, they get the ball. He comes breaking out. That's the best player in the league right there. 100%. Best player in the league on the offensive side. You just let walk in because you took that shot. That can't happen. You're exactly right. So that's five for him. He's taking the team out of the back tonight. And, uh, and going all the way, but t- you know, we talked about the mental mistakes and it's getting, I'm finding more and more from both sides as the game goes on, because they're getting mentally tired. I think yep. the heat and all that, yep. a lot of it's going to be how they hydrated at the break there. Good point. 
Allison trying to go low on Puma. He's turned back up top. He'll flip to Grayson. And that shot is going to go off. I watched a little uh, extracurriculars as Allison and Puma got into it. Puma just uh, just stays on you the whole game, right? And one uh, one thing I like about him, he's he's uh, you know he's not a big dude by any means. Not a backward step from him. No. He was looking straight up at Allison, who's a much bigger lacrosse player, and was probably saying, "Yeah, I can take you, bud." <laughs> so I, in, in, even if he's wrong, at least he's willing to stand there and say it. You know, we talk Ooh. about goalies' confidence, and it's got to be sky high. It's the same as a defender. You're going against some of the best players in the league right here. You got to believe you're stopping everybody. And yet, again, short memory. If you get beat, right back up there, get back in his face. Don't let him intimidate you. Exactly. 20 seconds here to work as Whitford completes this offensive unit here. He'll hit Gage in the chest. Gage looking for a transition pass at his blue line. He finds Grayson. I gotta say from the Wolf side, I'd like to see Whitford get going. He's, yeah. He hasn't had much and uh, Dulong and Muir has stepped up this game and I'd like to see Whitford get one. I think that might be the, a big turning point if the Wolves can make it happen. Yeah. I would, I would want Dulong to start taking them shots again too because he, he couldn't miss in that first quarter. No. I like what Tom did there as Tom was over that bottom hand, not able to pick it up. Normando up to Whit Wheatley, excuse me. That's gonna just go out of his reach. As a 50-50 ball is almost won by Wheatley. It's gonna get picked up by the Hurricanes and transition to the offensive end. As Mr. Five Goals, G. Holmes has the ball here, gets a pick from Kennedy. Decides to drag it low, looking for uh, east to west pass to Glazebrook. Glazebrook plays it off the boards. Sitting there, met by Kelsey, goes up to Allison, over to Holmes. Holmes gets a pick from Kennedy, tries to get him on the roll. Oh, a nice little pick up. Or really, I thought he had it. Puma will take it. As a number situation. Oh. Tries to get the short side there. and hits the bar. Exactly. That's a good effort there. I actually thought he was going to go far side. I think Gage thought he was going to the side too because he was a little surprised when it came mm -hmm. on the inside line. Interesting one there. Wheatley didn't go with him. That could have been a two on one. Hang back, not even in the rebound spot. Cowan thinking about going behind the back but decides to keep, gets a pick from Campbell. You want to talk about commitment. Number 15 there for the Hurricanes. Driving from Cape Breton Island. Five hours, every game, every practice. That's a kid who wants to be in the lineup. And almost buried a I huge know. one right there. Almost buries it. That rebound right off front. You know, probably the smallest Hurricane to, uh, offensive player, and he went right through that middle and took a great chance. He's had a couple opportunities down the middle there. They're really crashing the net for those rebounds. Noah's been giving them up, so. West now goes to Baird. Baird can't come up with that pass. That goes to the left side in Broussard. He'll recover, 15 to work. Gets it to Wheatley. Wheatley back to Broussard. He can't come up with that pass. It's going to hit some mesh and go back to the Hurricanes' possession. You know, if Dylan gets one, I think we're going to hear him in Cape Breton. Now. <laughs> uh, they're going to scream on that one. I hope so. I really, uh, I love that uh, our junior league is expanding out of HRM. That's for sure. Puma all over Holmes. Holmes goes to the lefty. Allison, Allison takes a big rip. That's going to go back over. Mitch, I'm feeling like next year there maybe should be a game in Cape Breton. So uh, you can look. I'll show you the text right now. Delano goes, we should have a practice uh, in uh, Cape Breton uh, next year. And I go, dude, play Mi'kmaq. They'll, they'll, <laughs> there's seven players on Mi'kmaq exactly. from there. No issue with that. We did try to do it a couple years ago, Mitch, but couldn't make it work. Uh, but, I mean, it's, when you got another player on another team, there's a little bit of more interest in doing that. And I think that the Hurricanes have been so excited with his commitment to their program that they're willing to show it. You know what I mean? They're willing to... They, because that was the one thing. If all the Cape Breton players are one team, not a huge incentive for another team to do it uh, if they don't have that grow-the-game kind of mentality. You're exactly right. When you see a player who's driving five hours... For practicing games, never missing a thing, you know, giving everything he's got, and then uh, you know you, you want to re you want to repay him by playing in front of his friends and family. And you know, 
I'm sure his, his family drives down here for, for well, games, I, but his, I, I his friends, say, it's a long way. I don't think he's, a, he's not a, an older player by any means. No, he's a so. first-year player this year, a fourth, a fourth or fifth-round pick, actually. I'm, I'm sure there's a um, parent making that run with 100%. him. 100%. Interesting pick. I, I've always wanted to ask uh, Coach McNeil if he knew about him. And I think he just saw his hockey stats. I got to say, there's no that. way he knew yeah. about him. It just probably is a happy accident. But maybe I'm wrong. Good effort. It's here either by great Cameron. scouting or he's just a smart guy. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> take either. Al, you know what? <laughs> Regardless, Campbell is out here for the Hurricanes, so he got him. It was a smart move in the end. Baird. 20 seconds here to work, goes to Dulong. Dulong with some speed, he's turned aside. As Broussard able to get it, Dulong all alone in the middle. Oh, baby! Catches it on his wrong side of the floor, drags it back to his proper side, right there on the crease. And that's Dulong's fourth. As we see here, Dulong circling around the net, Broussard able to collect that loose ball. Nobody sees that Dulong's out there. Dulong, boom, able to bring it back from the post he came from, almost. You know, you, you said you wanted to see more from Dulong, and uh, they went back to him on two shots there, right? It looks like the Hurric I think the Hurricanes thought they had the ball, because the two crease defenders sprinted up the floor like yeah. they were going to get it, yeah. and then just left Dulong all alone in front. Much like when Holmes was left alone there, like you can't leave a guy like no. Dulong alone. That's recovered. I mean, I know you want to be aggressive, but not, not well, on those two guys. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, Aggressive, but safety over aggression for sure. Um, Allison has this on the left side, met by Puma. He goes down to Grayson, picks for him. Grayson comes over the top, goes to Lynch on the right side. Lynch moves it down to Holmes as they work the three-man side. Nice little pick from Kennedy almost works. As that is recovered by Puma, good job there by Cox to come and set a pick. Nice pick and roll there, just couldn't connect. That's exactly it. Kennedy coming to set that pick for Holmes. Holmes trying to feed him. Looked pretty, just couldn't make it connect. We say Holmes, not just a goal scorer, he can do other things too. He just The offense runs right through him, it's amazing. And honestly, I think he is more effective that way when you don't know if he's gonna take it or shoot, take it or shoot. You know, he's always so, uh, almost have a 10 second violation here. That's gonna get picked up by Tom. Tom with Muir, keeps, oh, and a beautiful stick save from McPhee. That's gonna get picked up by the Hurricanes. Grayson almost able on a little break of his own. Now Mitch, I don't know if that was Gage or the defender, but they took out Muir and allowed the defender to take the shot. So <laughs> I don't know who communicated that, but clearly they were not letting Muir get that pass, well, so. So it's funny you say that. Because you have, you have an offensive guy on one side, a defensive guy coming in. And it's like the, the Jamie Barnett scenario. Whereas if he doesn't know where he's shooting, how am <laughs> I as a goalie supposed to know where he's shooting? So it can come to, uh, sometimes I personally, I always want that force pass. Like I, I don't want the guy that's been running in off half, uh, from half, who's been thinking about what he's going to do from half to have the time to do it. You know what? I, I always want to see that force pass because you know, but that's just me. That's just goaltending preferences. But we also know that you would clearly communicate that to the defender. Oh, yeah. you, want you, would, you would hear it on the stream right now. <laughs> I think Gage did too, because he fell right back in the crease, he was did. not letting him take that. Yeah. But I actually agree with Gage's call there. Like, that's not a strong offensive no. player coming in there. And yours had two tonight. He's feeling it. I don't want Muir touching that ball at all. No, and Tom actually took a great shot on net. He did. He forced, he forced McPhee to make a big save. That's all you can. Maybe, maybe Tom thought about it too much as he was running that far. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes defenders get too excited about That's it. That's right. What is that, Schrodinger's breakaway or whatever? <laughs> Good movement here from the Wolves. Oh, Norman Doe thought about passing, decides to shoot. Quick snapshot, I think, cough gauge off guard there. One thing about Norman, though, is it, it, it's all arms. It's not that huge wind-up kind of thing. So it's like, as we get a look here, 
Boom. You see how he doesn't really take that big, like, almost crow hop yeah. step almost. It's all arms. but It's it, like a quick wrister in exactly. hockey, right? And like it, a, it, I think it surprised Gage. I, don't, I think he was expecting the wind-up, and then he quickly snapped it, and he, he just wasn't expecting the shot to come that quick at him. There's so many things coming in front of you, whether it's sticks yeah. and, and bodies and helmets, and, and then all of a sudden, you know, you see something from an angle you're not expecting. Tough to stop. Bouchard gets it to Whitford. Whitford bobbles that pass, recovered by the Canes. Back Breaks. to a three goal lead here. Mm -hmm. Five minutes, 35 seconds left in the second, or third, excuse me. As Barkhouse gives a good one to Holmes. Allison, oh, finding number 11. Not exactly sure who that was in the middle alone. Good extended effort here by the Hurricanes. Can't get that reset. Wide open, too, and just missed the net on that one. Norman Dove. Broussard over to, trying to find Muir. Muir has two defenders all over him, picked up by Grayson. Francis Grayson runs through a big hack from Muir, met by Norman Doe again as they put him on the ground. Normando beats two Hurricanes. McDougal making him pay for that in the corner. Still cannot come up with it. Whitford finally does. 12 seconds here to work. Whitford, outside shot, just goes wide, recovered by the Hurricanes. West all over the defender. And that's going to be a checking from, or a cross checking, or a checking from behind penalty. Looks like a cross checking penalty here to the, her, or, uh, to the Wolves. O'Connell, Puma up top for this PK. Looks like uh, Puma and Barkhouse down low. Big for chance the for the Wolves. Hurricanes here. Yep, Grayson, Glazebrook on the left side as well as Allison. Holmes and number 11 on the right side. Number 11 uh, didn't get too many looks early on, but since that uh, opportunity on that last one, we see him right back out on a power play. Grayson steps into one that goes wide, intended for the right. Oh, beautiful cross crease pass and a better save from Cox. As Allison and Holmes play touch up top, Allison thought about setting a pick for Holmes. Holmes, big block there off the shin of Puma. He'll feel that one tomorrow. Back up to Allison. Over to Holmes again. 10 seconds here left to work. A minute 15 on the power. Holmes steps into that one, heavy shot. Eaten up by Cox, Cox, he'll go back to Barkhouse. Barkhouse has to get it over, gets a pick from Forsythe. Runs right into Allison, able to maintain possession. Barkhouse has the hurricane in tow. Maintaining possession, killing all of the shot clock. And rightfully getting a round of applause here from the Wolves fans. Good job for Barkhouse. As Cowan takes this up for the Hurricanes, he'll flip to Allison. As they get the last bit of their power play unit out here in Francis Grayson. 30 seconds on the power. 15 on the shot. Oh, Jack, Jack Lederick, excuse me, number 11? Nope. Owen Cox. Oh, Owen. Owen Cox, excuse me. He did play game two, we forgot about him. He hasn't played much tonight. No, but he's looked good the last two, uh, last two sets he's been on. As Bouchard gets that up to West, West can't corral it, finally does. Gets a little pick from Dulong. 
as the penalty expires. We're back to five on five lacrosse here for the last two minutes of this third quarter. Wheatley. That ends up on the back of Gage McPhee's net. He'll take his time to get it out, finds Devine. Devine up to Grayson. Grayson over to Allison. Allison cuts hard to the net. A big outside shot off the right shoulder of Noah Cox. Gonna go out into the crowd. Hurricanes maintain possession. Good movement here as Allison tries to find Lynch. Up to Holmes. Holmes gets a pick from Lynch and rolls. That was a beautiful pick and roll. Oh my, and Dulon drops the shoulder on Campbell. And then on Holmes. Broussard somehow finds it on the doorstep, but he steps in the crease on that one. Up to Glazebrook. Glazebrook one on one here. Big step there as Noah Cox with the power move to the right side. That's gonna get collected by Barkhouse. Barkhouse gets the pick from Whitford and finds Forsythe. Forsythe finding, no, oh, Norman down in the middle. And that was a beautiful goal by Normando. Right through the middle, far side on Gage. And we'll see, we see here as Forsythe looking for some help and Normando just turns on the Jets. Nobody picks them up. Able to drag Gage to the far post and go to the short side. Beautiful goal there. Uh, coming right off the bench, nobody grabbed Normando and went right through the middle. And a four goal lead here that they look to take into the third intermission. You know, says a lot to those young kids out there too. Mm -hmm. They often come on the floor and go to their spot and stand on the outside, through the middle. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, absolutely. Especially like on this then, if you're, if you're, from, let's say you're a, a Wolves righty who gets, you know, you're the last one coming on the floor. You run right through the middle. Why, you know, why wouldn't you? Good effort there by the Wolves. Bouchard now with the ball gets it over to Whitford and he'll change last shot clock of the game, or sorry, period, quarter, whatever we're doing. <laughs> Quarters bits, quarter That's it. <laughs> it's all, it's senior, I blame senior. Big outside shot from yours, turned aside by McPhee. Devine able to get this up safely with 10 seconds left for the Hurricanes. We'll need to take it to the cage here. Allison, he's met by Stevenson, can't get the shot on cage. And there you have it, a four goal lead into the fourth quarter for the Sacco Wolves. I believe this is the first time all year that the, uh, the hey, Hurricanes Tanner? have been down going into the fourth. I'm Mike. Mitch, uh, Mitch has lost his mic here for a second, so uh, we'll give him a second to re reset that up. <laughs> I feel like Freddie Mercury with his mic. <laughs> he's got it loose here, and he's just going to start walking around in the top, uh, giving us some great music here. Mitch, are we going to ask you to sing in this one, in this quarter? N nobody here wants that. I'm pretty well, good no at... no one here is going to hear it. It's well, going to be back home. I can, I can do Teenage Dirtbag by Weedus on oh, karaoke. I'm not, not going to disagree with that one. <laughs> so, Mitch, we're going uh, you know, into the fourth. What is, uh, what is Coach McNeil saying to, uh, to his team? It's the first time they've been down, going in the fourth by a, quite, a, quite a margin here. You know, uh, a lot of players respond differently. You know, sometimes players need that tough love. Sometimes they need a soft hand. You know, uh, they probably need a little bit of a softer hand. Maybe if they're if they've never been beaten this year, they're a little they're in that kind of foreign territory. You don't want to dig into them too much. But you know, um, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. You know, it's it's funny. I was just thinking about that, and I was like, if I'm coaching team and it's the first time down, what do I do? And I think, uh, well, they were doing it before. I actually would talk to G outside and say, you got this five minutes, fire him up and get him going, right? Yeah. This I, is his last year. He, he wants it now. He wants it at home. So get, tell him to figure it out to get him going. And yeah, it's funny you say that because I, I did get to have that conversation with G before the game. And, and he, you know, he was very adamant that, you know, every single person in that Hurricanes room is on the same page and they want the same goal. So, you know, if they're going to get somebody to light that fire under their ass, it's going to be G. Holmes. Yeah, 100% with that. You know, I, what are the, uh, what's Coach Tishmar saying to his team right now? 
Uh, I think he's super proud of the effort they put through three. Uh, but he, and, and that, that's the same thing, is in the other dressing room, in the Sackville Wolves dressing room, you have 20 individuals, 25 individuals that want the same thing the Hurricanes want. And they haven't, they haven't had a taste of that, you know. I'm just, I'm glad I'm not doing it. I'm glad I'm <laughs> up here commenting, enjoying this, you know, excellent lacrosse game. Yeah. Excellent series. It's been, it's been unbelievable. And, you know, the, the Hurricanes are coming with everything, including the kitchen sink on this one. So <laughs> yeah. don't change a thing. Keep that aggressive defense and uh, keep the penalties to a minimal. And, I, I you know, they're, they're rolling right now. They're rolling. And that's the, the, the nail on the head is penalties. Uh, the officials have been uh, quite good, uh, you know, calling the same thing. We've had the same three-man unit all three games. Yep. So by now, they should be comfortable with what, what's being called, um, which I think they should be. It, you know, maybe not in the game, but when you're outside, when you get back and you, uh, you know, you, you take the game in, because right now when you're playing it, you can't take it in. <laughs> You know what I mean? So when the coaches are watching this tonight, then they'll be able to kind of uh, make that call. But this is right now about keeping your emotions in check. Mm -hmm. You know, keeping the technical things, what you're supposed to do, loose ball, catching and passing, you know, keeping people to the outside, not giving the high side, yep. and just focus, like, literally, do the basics for 15 minutes, and we're going to game four. Exactly. That's, that's what he's got to say there. So wanted to make sure that everyone's aware of what they need and, you know, I'm just looking over at the Hurricanes dressing room and coaches are still in there talking. They're having a good chat about what we need to do here. You know, all you got to do is win this 15-minute quarter. Win this 15-minute quarter, you're in game four, and you do it all again. And that's what the, the Wolves have to, be, uh, have to be sure of, is that uh, they got to give it all for this last 15 minutes up four. But the Hurricanes will not go away quietly, that's for sure. It's interesting sitting up here in the in the section with the Wolves here. It seems like every play is like, oh, like, you know, like we're still in the third. We got 15 minutes to go. But like the one little turnover might be the decision in the game is how tight this series has been, even though it's four goals. Like, it, I mean, this has been back and forth and, you know, nothing is confirmed. I mean, even last night with four minutes to go, I still felt there was a chance for the Wolves yeah. to come back. Right. Yeah, it was never I really over. Agree. I couldn't agree more. Excuse me. Uh, I, and that's exactly it. You know, even even that six goal spread or whatever it was at its worst seemed closable. Yeah. Hey, this 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 series has been a series of runs, right? You know, like the first quarter was a run by the Wolves, and then replied. Last night was the opposite, a run by the the Hurricanes first, and then the Wolves. And so now it's time, as you know, I'm sure Coach uh, McNeil said. It's our turn for the run. It's been happening in all series. You guys just need a bigger run than them. Don't let it stop, right? So uh, they're going to come point. out here with everything they got. But, the, you know, the Wolves have been holding tough all, series, all, all game tonight. So we'll see what happens. Hurricanes certainly not with their heads down to start this fourth nope. quarter. It's interesting there, though. Uh, I saw Noah come on the floor there. One of his defenders went over to tell him good job, and he said, get away from me. I'm fine. <laughs> That nothing's going in by me for this last quarter is what he said. So sometimes you don't want that positive yeah. reinforcement because you need the negative yeah. just to stay sharp. Yeah. Sometimes you're just so focused, don't talk to me. Yeah. I got it. I'm just I've told, watching uh, the ball. I've told teammates to where to go and how to get there because <laughs> I was in my own zone. <laughs> sometimes you told them because they messed up too, right? Yeah, well, everybody makes mistakes. I'm not too hard on them, but if they make it a, twice, <laughs> then we're, we're in trouble. Second time's their fault, so exactly. we're going on them. <laughs> It's all good to make a mistake as long as you learn from it. Yeah. And it's interesting, you know, like we we're hoping it might get, sometimes in these games it gets cooler because some people leave. <laughs> Nobody is leaving yeah. this building at all tonight. Everybody went outside to get some air and everybody just filed back in. No questions good asked. Good clean win by Cowan, but Bouchard with a huge hack putting his stick on the ground. And I'm looking is... for Bouchard to step up here in, in this fourth. Not that he's played bad, but. I just see him making some key plays like that one right there for this team. He's made some key defense. Like, and that's the thing. Like, he is on the offensive end of this floor, um, you know. But his his mentality is a defenseman. Like, you know what I mean? He plays such the such a great job playing that role. Right there, you saw him at the start of the quarter. Cowan wins that straight up. He knocks it out of his stick to make sure that there's no. Up and he didn't have to pull that slash from nope. the back of it, like you know where you get that big. 
you know, for lack of a better term, wild slash. That was just a concise slash. Ooh, oh, good effort there. Save. And that's going to get a back over push as Puma able to pop Grayson over. He's met by a slash from Holmes. Holmes, see, if, if I know that I have Glenn Holmes stuck on the defensive end, I need three shot clocks in a row. I just want to keep him on the off or keep him on the defensive end of the floor so I know he won't be on the offensive end of the floor. You know what I mean? I think that's a great, great idea. He's tired as it is because he's been playing both ways, so mm -hmm. just keep getting those loose balls, but another shot wild on the outside. And first one to pick it up, Holmes has the legs to stay on. Oh, I guess. Interesting there, Grayson there on the back over. The referees were yelling no because it went off the goalie. Ooh. Um, and it, I think he thought because they yelled no, he was okay. But once he grabbed possession, it wasn't anymore. I agree with you. I, have, I, I do think that's pretty much because Grayson is a smart lacrosse player. He, he definitely knows the rules. Oh, my. As, as the aforementioned Grayson almost gets one from the doorstep. Dulong almost picking off that pass intended for him. Dulong starts this ball. And some pressure here by the Hurricanes. Mm -hmm. They need it. They, they need every possession they can. Bouchard, oh my, goes to Forsythe. A beautiful stick save. A, I, I thought it was the stick too. I, I, I didn't so. think it was the bar. I thought Gage got across and got that. Mm -hmm. I think it was going in. That's a huge so stop. As Cowan saved the side right Harper. there, if you ask me on that one. And up to Stevenson. Stevenson all alone. Ooh, big save from Gage McPhee. I really like that. Gage waited for him to get close and then exploded off of the line. Good Two save. huge stops by Gage here. I mean, the Hurricanes got to be aggressive and go up the floor, and so they're trusting that he's going to make the save. Two for two so far. Yeah, they can all, you know, they ain't going to win down by four anyways. They need the offense. Exactly. So. Puma, match stride for stride by Holmes. I don't think Holmes has been off the floor yet. Puma. Cooper, Puma working hard for that goal. I think you're also right. I think he played a full three minutes there. That's going to hurt us. We're going down, this, down the stretch here. Mm -hmm. Puma with a beautiful goal, though, here. Turning Holmes around both ways, spinning back forward, and just firing at Bass Gage, who's had an exceptional start. I got beat on that one. I, I really love seeing hardworking lacrosse players get rewarded for their efforts. And that's exactly what happened to Cooper Puma there as he has been sharp through both series here for the Sackville Sports Wheel Wolves. Not necessarily uh, putting up those points, but getting those loose balls and, and you know, being that third, fourth assist that just doesn't get on the game sheet. You know that's what wins championships, right? Exactly. Those third, fourth assists, those, those plays that dope. nobody sees, those are the ones that matter. Oh, a big save there from McPhee, able to maintain the, or uh, uh, not allow a rebound. That's been one of his strengths in the series. He really does not allow rebounds or second chances. Mm -hmm. Was a little off in the first, but uh, is, uh, recovered from that. And it's, it's easy as a goaltender if everybody's shooting at your stick. It's not so easy if, uh, if you're getting them off the leg yeah. pads, off the ribs, uh, wrists, off the you know chest. You gotta really think about corralling that rebound. Exactly. With his size, he has that ability to kind of shrink himself in to keep mm -hmm. it in front of him. Exactly. I get the most of him behind the ball. Whitford tries to go to Bouchard. That is bobbled, but recovered by Wheatley. He's on his wrong side. Has a lane, though. Tries to go for that far post. Turned aside by McPhee. Allison now goes up top to Kennedy, excuse me. Allison over to Holmes. Holmes, 10 seconds to work, gets a pick, goes over it, looking for that far post just wide. That's going to hit the roof. And the Sackville Sportsfield Wolves lead 10 to 5 here. 10 minutes, 40 seconds left in game three. Hurricanes up two games to nothing. And the Wolves here are looking to force a game four back in Sackville. Looks like a moving pick on the far side. It's been 
sitting so long, i got to stretch out my knee. I, I'm <laughs> constantly stretching. Oh, Doulon gets this off the boards. He's going to have a breakaway here. And just misses wide. Uh, a little... I didn't think... I thought 14 could run faster than that. Huh. I, uh, I feel like 14 hasn't come off a lot. I'm a little tired That's this true. That's true. Because he did not... Uh, was playing the rebound off the Doulon shot almost. Uh, I, I will say, I mean, the Hurricanes look... They look tired. Yep. The Wolves still look like they got energy, and the Hurricanes look tired. Now, when you're Ooh, up 10 five, there. it's easier to have more energy, too, yes, right? So. for sure. But in this series, Sackville has been the nail, and now they're getting that look at being the hammer right now. Yep. Puma over top of Holmes. Goes over to Muir. Muir with space. Tries a little shovel pass. Don't love that one. Cox will come out and play this. That's going to be a back over. Uh, <laughs> bench staff of the Hurricanes not thrilled with the call there. They felt the official was a little slow in calling it in, but I feel like that's what it's been the whole time. On a, on a back over in that situation, they're often letting the slow whistle. I think what the Hurricanes are mad about was the Wolf defender was very close to him mm -hmm. and wasn't backing off, which was holding the whistle, and I think uh, they, were, they were annoyed with that amount of time, uh, which, you know, I would say, I bet you in a regular season game, that might have been called. Yep. We're in game three of the exactly. finals here, right? We're, nobody wants to make that call. Foresight to West. West tries to go through the five hole. Beautiful save there from the, oh my goodness, as he keeps. I, I did not see that. Gage didn't think he had it, and he clearly didn't because it did came West out. Did West fake the shot? Did Alfie West fake the shot? We're going to have to see because he Gage did not think he nope, had that nope, at all. No, nope. he picks up the rebound behind the net. The boys, the Hurricanes, don't know where it is. And Wes just sneaks around and makes them pay good heads up lacrosse from Alfie West. So interesting on that one because on the shot, I would say Gabe didn't feel he got it. Like he almost was like, I think he it's was behind looking me. For it, looking for it in his leg pads. And, uh, and then um, in that same moment there, they, uh, they felt that he, he, the defenders came in and not looking at where the loose ball would have been and walked right out behind. Looks well, like an unsportsmanlike. Unsportsmanlike from the bench. I don't know if that's actually on 28 or from the bench, but. Yeah, it could go either way. I knew that the uh, the Hurricane uh, bench staff were pretty animated down there. It wouldn't shock me if they took two for something. Well, I think upset about what happened down yep. here with the defender being too close. And in that situation, why was the whistle not blowing? But it, he never had it. I mean, no, yeah. it was literally in the corner. Nobody could see why, but that is what happened. Norman Doe now has this on the left side. Goes over to Muir the righty. Muir off the post and out. That's going to maintain possession here for the Wolves. We also have to remember the Hurricanes have never been in this situation. Down this late in the game by this much. Mm -hmm. This is this is new to them. So Muir sneaks in the back door from Doolong. Beautiful job there. That's... That one was tough. I mean, I think everyone saw that one coming. Mm -hmm. And even the defender had backed in to try to cover it, but uh, still got it through to Muir, and he buried it. So, uh, the, you know, the, when, when Doolong's on the top, Gage has got to respect that and step out and can't cover that low one. That defender's got to be able to cut that off. The man advantage doing exactly that, creating an advantage. Cohen. Oh, I actually, I was like, Cohen just got beat clean for once, but it was a violation. <laughs> That's Looks why he got beat clean. Yeah, got exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, he has been uh, very, very strong in there for the Hurricanes. Holmes. Oh, gets the shot off, but the right shoulder of Noah Cox saying not today. O'Connell gets Whitford out of the bench. Whitford waits for the rest of his unit to kind of spread out. Goes over to the lefty, Broussard, Joel Broussard. He goes back to West. That does not come through. That's picked up by Forsythe. Forsythe finds Broussard in the middle. Oh my, as he just puts it over the net. And that ball is gonna end up in possession of the Hurricanes. 
you had said earlier about it's hard to put it over Gage. You just proved the only no, way exactly. to do it is on the back of the net. There, exactly. There's no way you're getting it over me and getting it in. But the thing is, though, is when these big goalies are coming up, they're getting narrow. Yeah. You know, so you got to be able to drag oh, that goalie Huge save by Noah. Sorry, Noah. So Glazebrook, Glazebrook with a big shot from the outside. Oh, another coming big save there yes. on Lynch. You're Lynch. right. I find that guys today are forcing Gage to go up. Yeah. And then continuing to go up when if you dropped it down, yeah. he, he, he's got to shrink because he's got to bring his body up. Same with other tall, tall goalies. I'm picking on Gage right now because he's the only one in the game. But, wow, yeah. um, no, Cox kind of has the same uh, height challenges as myself. Puma, oh, able to get it around the key. And looks like the man who brought the broom is leaving early. As he he actually is trying to give the broom to a couple other fans, I think. Maybe he was just late doing chores. Brought it from home. <laughs> He's pretending to sweep the floor on the way out. He looked a little he looked a little sheepish walking out. I'm not gonna lie. He's like, I need to go now. Yeah. <laughs> it's 13 to five. This is a. Uh, I, I don't think the Hurricanes have been dominated like this all year. No, so uh, this is a big confidence booster for the Wolves, for sure, going into what looks like going to be a game four on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. And I am here for it. I have been enjoying this series of lacrosse. That is for certain. You know, there still is six minutes to go. If the Hurricanes can get something going here. Well, how quickly did G Home score those four goals Whew. in a stretch? Like, I mean, three minutes maybe? Yeah. It was funny, I said to you at the start of this quarter that one of the defenders went up to Noah and said, don't, he said, uh, you, gotta, you got this one, you got, don't talk to me, I got all these. <laughs> and he's not let one in yet. <laughs> he shut the door in the fourth here, right? You better knock on some wood rigging. I'm, I'm knocking on some wood. <laughs> Noah, just so you know, I knocked on the wooden table here, so just make sure you're <laughs> safe on that. It's a nice hickory, I think. <laughs> Mitch is going to make a, a duck out of it later. That's right. I wish. I'm no Ian Higgins. <laughs> That's true. We need Ian here to make something for Ian us. Ian Higgins is a phenomenal woodworker. Great lacrosse player as well. Maybe we get a cabinet for the trophy here, you know? Or just maybe have him build some trophy blocks or something. That's a pretty cool idea. West. Dragging down the right side. Goes back up top to O'Connell. Eight seconds here to work. Big outside oh. shot. Rings off the crossbar. Good job by the Wolves to maintain possession. Broussard coughs that one up, oh. and Lacroix is going to take a holding penalty here. Nelson dropped the ball on that one. And this is things like, I, in the, well, let's call it the last 10, 15 years, there's been that huge, like, one-handed check but as soon as that one-handed check comes, the official is looking at your non-stick hand. 100%. And if that non-stick hand touches the shoulder, you're gone for two for sure. It's those little things that, uh, you know, it, um, being an official, like, you, you know exactly what you're looking for. And as soon as somebody grabs something yep. like that, we're, we're calling it. So why in a game like this do you need, you know, two hands on the stick and cross-check, keep it down? All you had to do is match feet right, right. there. Match oh. feet. And you're good. The whole goal here is to stay five on five and kill as much time as possible, not take a penalty. Puma jumps the power quickly. Allison over to Grayson. Back to Allison. He's able to get it down to Kennedy. Kennedy, big shot turned aside by the right shoulder of Cox. Back to Kennedy here. And now to Allison, down to Grayson. 25 here to work for the Hurricanes. Allison steps into one. That's turned aside again. Just noting G's Cox. not on this power play right now. And you cannot do that. Noah Cox just threw it from his hand to a player. You actually have to, and, and I only stick. know this because I made this mistake and had it called <laughs> against me, is you have to put it in your stick. And, and I actually don't see it called that often, and I'm glad it's called because in Founders Cup, when it really matters in, in, in any national yeah. championship, yeah, it's going to be called. coming to the Hurricanes here. I didn't see it, but. Nor did I. We'll have some four on four lacrosse unless the Wolves can kill. Big outside shot from West. Another unsportsmanlike. Well, frustration coming through here late for the Hurricanes. Interesting, like, you know, Scott's one of those refs that does, it's just, he's really not gonna listen to you at all. Right? No. Like he's, 
he's probably the first one to tee anyone up. Yeah. Why are you talking to him? Yeah. <laughs> right. One ref will let it go away is probably Susie, so yell at that guy for a while. Oh, you know, actually, he tossed those two Dartmouth coaches, uh, Jordan Mills and uh, oh, did he? Shane, uh, out of, uh, was it game two? Game, I think game two. I just know you're frustrated, but why, like, oh, yeah. you know, I, I, I could see a coach doing it sometimes, so why the player? Just but let, the, you know. And the thing is, is, like, I can see a coach doing it when player safety gets involved. Right. You know what I mean? That's when you have to die on your sword, but, you know... If nobody's taking liberties on your players, oh, there we just saw Wheatley try to go around Gage McPhee. Wasn't able to get him to stand up straight like some of his offensive players. Ooh, a big outside shot from Grayson on the run. 3.30 to go in this one, Mitch. And Hurricanes looking to uh, chip away at the Wolves for game four. As we've seen a couple heavy slashes and cross checks thrown late. Stevenson. Has that ball put on the ground. Whitford recovers. Tries to get it over to Muir. Oh, my, as Bouchard is checked into a penalty box door that comes open. Luckily, no, nobody hurt on that one. I hate seeing that. Yeah, and I think the Wolves had opened the door because his time was up. Yeah, so think, it was like almost I think like he was I, opening yeah. the door to get out, and then his own guy got pushed right through it. For Puma, Puma a on a one-on-two. Oh, I thought he was able to stay out of the crease, but pushed in there. He tried to the do the dance, but she didn't quite yeah. stay out. Oh, my. Puma. I thought he actually, oh, he, he's going to force a Hurricanes. Oh, good job. I, I saw the same. I'm pretty sure he stepped back in the yeah, crease. Yeah, yeah. I think we had the best angle on that one, but Divine got up slowly. Ooh, big save there off the cage of McPhee. They definitely should go right at Divine now. Who's ever yep. covering him, go right at him. He's definitely laboring on that it, ankle. He could have very well rolled that ankle coming around that net. 12 seconds left on the power. Baird steps into one that goes wide. Going to be a back over unless Normando. He cannot come up with it. Cox is going to put that Wolves must not have seen that because uh, that's where you give the ball to Normando and it's Go four on one side and one on one on the other. Yep. He, he was definitely laboring there. And the speed, too. Normando has quick feet and quick hands. We got four seconds left on the penalty. We're going to be back to five on five. Two oh five left in the fourth and final quarter here from the Spryfield Lines Den Arena. As Kennedy can't come around on that one. Good job by Barkhouse. I've been very impressed with Barkhouse tonight. I thought he's played a great role, a quiet role, but a great role on the DN for the Wolves. I gotta say the difference tonight is the, wolf, the Wolves ro role players have played bigger roles. Barkhouse being one of them, Muir being another one. Like they have really mm -hmm. stepped up and they were, they were good. Yep. But to win in the playoffs and the finals, you have to be great. Mm -hmm. And the Wolves have done that tonight. And they've proved to themselves they can do it again in game four. That's all, sometimes all you need is one, Mitch, in the best of five. Once you get that first one, you got the confidence. Yes, we can beat them. Exactly. I mean, no one has beaten the Hurricanes this season. So it's hard to feel, how are you going to do this? No one else has done it. <laughs> Until you finally get someone who's able to put it down. And so they're going to be the first of them. You four. find a crack in the armor. Bouchard able to recover this down to Dulong. Dulong with a big pump fake. Beautiful. Looked like Zach Kerrigan on that uh, big fake shot. One minute to go in the fourth here. Good job here by the Hurricanes. That's disrupted by Stevenson, but Lynch recovers. Lynch gets the ball to Holmes. Holmes goes back to Lynch. Good inside roll and a nice shot there. Beautiful save. I thought that was a great shot from Lynch. But one of my keys to the game was Noah had to be the best player, and he has really played amazing tonight. Yeah. His defense has been much better in front of him too, yep. but yep. he has definitely been on point tonight, and that confidence is sky high right now. Zero goals against him. As Allison and West having some words here, as Allison taking some light, or... And there you have it, Stevenson. The last thing Alfie West needs to do is fight right now. I was like, just walk away, yeah. man. And Dulong able to recover here. Dulong to West. West 
thought about it, goes back. That just trickles wide after hitting the foot of Cage, or a hand of Cage. A oh, little dust up here. And there you have it, the Sackville Wolves force game four. And they are certainly in the heads of the Hurricanes right now. And here are the fans standing and cheering for them here right now. We're obviously on the Wolves side. And the Wolves, I gotta say, Smitty, Jay told you to leave that trophy in your trunk. I think he was right. Yeah, I think every Wolf fan told me to leave it in the trunk. And they yeah, were right they tonight, did not so. love seeing that come through. You know, that, uh, well, you gotta bring it in. The, the Hurricanes posted uh, it's in the house tonight. But exactly uh, that. Wolves did their job. I, I gotta say that the role players really stepped up tonight and did the extra things that needed to happen to beat this team. Um, I don't know if the, you know, shortening the bench early in game one and two has come back to hurt them a bit in the series, but um, they're gonna get one more night off. Uh, and then go back to uh, to the the den and in, uh, in the wolf den, and it's not an easy place to win a game. So last you know, time it was a really close game mm -hmm. in that one. So uh, we're going to see what happens. What what are you seeing for game four, Mitch? They need Noah Cox to play like game three. Uh -huh. Noah Cox. He, he I thought he looked very sharp tonight. Um, they're going to need that uh, effort again. Uh, and and the one thing I like uh, about Dulong especially is his maturity level. So many older, what you may refer to as more mature lacrosse players in this uh, arena would have been all too well happy to oblige Allison right there. Right. But then you're gone for the next game. Yeah. And you are more important to the Wolves. Well, Allison is super important to the Hurricanes, but if he's willing to go, you know, he's willing well, to sit out. But I, I think Allison was trying to bait Dulong into something there uh, to try to get him out for the next game. And, you know, I think Dulong did a good job of walking away. I mean, I'm i kind of surprised that Alfie got into it a little bit. I know the Wolves fans were looking for something here, but, like, why would you be looking for something, um, you know, in that if kind of way? Just, just, just walk away, right? Like, there's – and uh, Allison wasn't doing anything. He was just checking him, just straight, yeah. straight checking him. So, anyways, it, it's just creating a little more rivalry for tomorrow night. So, uh, I'm excited to see uh, – or not tomorrow night. We got, we're got we going to Wednesday for That's the next right. one. So, a day off in between. And, of course, if we go to Game 5, it's the next night on Thursday. So, Ooh. it's going to be uh, – it's going to be – a tight finish here for sure. Exciting times. Thanks for joining us. Catch game four Wednesday night, 7.30 from the Den. Thanks for tuning in.